never changes. The Romans waged war to gather slaves and wealth. Spain built an empire from its lust for gold and territory. Hitler shaped a battered Germany into an economic superpower. But war never changes. In the 21st century, war was still waged over the resources that could be acquired. Only this time, the spoils of war were also its weapons. Petroleum and uranium. For these resources, China would invade Alaska, the U.S. would annex Canada, and the European Commonwealth would dissolve into quarreling, bickering nation-states bent on controlling the last remaining resources on Earth. In 2077, the storm of World War had come again. In two brief hours, most of the planet was reduced to cinders. And from the ashes of nuclear devastation, a new civilization would struggle to arise. A few were able to reach the relative safety of the large underground vaults. Your family was part of that group that entered Vault 13. Imprisoned safely behind the large vault door, under a mountain of stone, a generation has lived without knowledge of the outside world. Life in the vault is about to change. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Big surprise, they announced a new Fallout TV series based on the video game series, so I'll explain what's going on with it, some of the Easter eggs, and what's going on with the story if you haven't played the game. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Of course, I'll do episode videos for the series when it gets here. This will be coming to Amazon as well. Remember, Amazon does The Boys. They're doing the Lord of the Rings TV series. I'll explain what's going on with that stuff at the end of the video, too. The intro is super nostalgic, narrated by Ron Perlman, who narrated a lot of the intros for the Fallout games, up at least until Fallout 4. I think that's when they switched different actors doing the voiceover. The series is being made by the people who made Westworld at HBO. They have a new deal at Amazon. I feel like that show at least started out pretty good. There were a lot of complaints about the more recent season, but they do a pretty good job when they're given the right IP. So I feel like the big thing now is adapting IP. Like they just announced The Last of Us TV show in development at HBO. So pretty much everybody is making series based on video games. The plot of the series will be relatively close to the plot of the video games. There are always some small changes that they have to make. But I will do a quick history for what's going on within the world of Fallout. Because it's sort of an alternate history type of story. They are working in partnership with the people who created the video game, so it's not like they're just completely doing this all by themselves. They do have the people who canonically created all the source material helping them with the story. And the funny thing about this is if you've been a fan of the Fallout series for a long time, they've actually been trying to make a Fallout TV show for about 10 years, if you can believe it. One of the reasons why it's Amazon that's making it, though, is because it costs so much money, they just have deep, deep pockets to spend on this. But as you see during that intro there, the story begins in Vault 13. Your protagonist character is called the Vault Dweller, and he's just tasked with fixing the water supply before it breaks within the next 150 days, or everyone in his bunker is going to die. The story actually begins in the year 2161, but the reason why all the technology looks like it's trapped in the 1950s is because there were some key differences in the way history progressed. The first big change is in 1947. The transistor is never invented, so that's why all the tech looks like it's super huge and trapped in the 1950s. Then in 2037, the robot butlers that you see during the trailer are created. They run on nuclear power. This becomes a big theme, things running on nuclear power. In 2044, Nuka-Cola is created. You see it all over the game, like they call the world of the Fallout game series the Nuka Break Universe. Then in 2052, the world's oil reserves start to get so low it creates a global panic and rush for resources that leads to the collapse of some major nations, open war, and then a strange bioagent called Limit 115 is discovered by Chinese spies at the Hoover Dam. The vials are smashed in a public square in Denver, which leads to a widespread release of a mutated new plague. Doesn't this sound familiar if you're living in 2020? It creates this national quarantine and the U.S. goes on lockdown. So it's almost exactly what's happening to us in real life right now. Then a couple years later in 2054, the government commissions a large-scale project called Project Safe House, which is how the bunkers are created, like you start at Bunker 13 during the first game. They task a company called Vault Tech to build 122 public fallout shelters. 
Some vaults are customized with more creature comforts than others, some are more utilitarian, then some vaults are used by the US government in a shadow organization called the Enclave for complex social experiments in ways to create superior people to repopulate the Earth with. So the Enclave is kind of one of the antagonists of the Fallout series during the games. By the year 2065, the creator of the Pip-Boy devices that you see all over the game learns that all hell is going to break loose within the next 50 years, so he outfits his hometown of Las Vegas with all the best defensive tech, a robot army, the best that money can buy. And in order to ensure his survival, he puts his body into cryostasis and jacks his brain into a vast computer network housed at the Lucky 38 Hotel, where he's able to control all the city's defenses and his army of robots. You wind up seeing him during present day in one of the game sequels. But then by 2077, the US government's Shadow Enclave commissions a bioagent to immunize American soldiers against any possible contagion and cure the new plague that initially started all this. So this is where the super soldiers start to come from. The virus is then renamed the Forced Evolution Virus. But the soldiers at the base where they're conducting this research mutiny and declare that that area has ceded from the Union, giving birth to the technocratic Brotherhood of Steel. Then within the year, full-scale nuclear war breaks out. No one is sure who fired the first shot or where it was headed, but when that first warhead was detected mid-flight, it triggered immediate responses from the USSR, China, and the United States. Everyone launched all their warheads at the same time full-blown, mutually assured destruction. The blasts from the warheads were so volatile that it literally reshapes the Earth's surface on a massive scale. Because there was no warning, the vault system hadn't been finished and most of the vaults hadn't even finished admitting everyone possible, so very few people relatively wind up surviving the initial blast. But the ones that did survive on the surface wound up being mutated horrifically. They become the super mutants that you encounter through the game. Since most of the vaults were unprepared to begin with, many of the 122 planned ones wind up collapsing within a decade, and most of human civilization starts to disappear from existence. Then you jump forward in the timeline almost 100 years to 2161, and that's where the story of the first game begins, with you, the vault dweller, starting on your mission to try and preserve the water system of Bunker 13. If they go based on the game, initially the main antagonist, the main villain of the series would be the Master, who's also kind of a version of a mutated human who's integrated himself with a Bunker Systems computer. He controls all the super mutants and wants to replace humanity with the super mutants. So that's a basic explainer for where the series begins and what the setting is like. So it's basically a post-apocalyptic environment. It's kind of like a Walking Dead type of situation. There are some zombies, like you could think of the super mutants as zombies, but they're way more hardcore than actual zombies. But you do have roving bands, you have people that try to repopulate the surface. So there are all kinds of different settlements and people and antagonists that you encounter through the series. My assumption, because it's Amazon that's doing the series, is it'll be 10 episodes per season and they'll try to do at least 5 to 6 seasons. I just did a trailer video for The Boys Season 2 that's premiering in September 4th. That's also an Amazon series, so Amazon is just spending really big to get really big IP. They're also in the middle of filming their live-action Lord of the Rings TV series. That won't premiere till 2022, I think. I will be doing episode videos for all this stuff though. I'm really hyped up about the Lord of the Rings series, but it's going to be a while before we learn more about that. That's going to be set during the Second Age, covering the period of history where Sauron tricked the elves, the dwarves, and the humans into forging the Rings of Power. But everyone, let me know in the comments, what do you think about this new Fallout series? It's going to be a while before we hear more about this. It'll probably be in development for most of next year, so I'm assuming episodes won't release until 2022. But this is just the beginning. Amazon, Netflix, HBO are developing all kinds of crazy big series. You have all the stuff that's coming to Disney Plus with the Marvel series. You have all the new HBO Max big budget series. So even though it sucks right now because of the virus, there is a lot of really, really big content that's coming the next couple of years. While you wait for everything, click here for that brand new Boys Season 2 trailer video. And click here to watch Hugh Jackman break down the Marvel Wolverine movies. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.